that's one of the best things I've ever heard you say. And you weren't recording there. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I've fucked it up already. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I forgot to introduce myself. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, my name's Anya Spencer. I'm Amy. Hello. I'm uh, Chris Seven. I'm playing uh, Offred Reinhardt. Uh, I'm Jack Hudson. I'm playing the esteemed role of Bane Greylock. Hi, my name is Catherine Gervin, and I'm going to be playing Aaron. It was when I played the Angel Gabriel in my school nativity play. First role I did in life ever, um, I was I was a sheep in a nativity when I was like four. And you know, it's just been going up from there, really. <laughs> My mum just stuck some cotton wool to a white T-shirt and was like, get out there, girl, you do it. <laughs> the first role I ever played was Dracula in my school play. It was in my year five uh, primary school. They did a version, they did a stage play of Fantastic Mr. Fox and I played the rat. And it was just, it was a version where my parents came to go and see it, and I was so embarrassed that when I got up on stage, I performed the entire uh, the entire play facing with my back to the audience, and that's the first oh. time I walked the boards. Oh, that's <laughs> incredible! I love Erin. She's such a great character. She works on a family farm with her father Anson. And um, she is really running a lot of it because her, oh, I don't know if this is a spoiler, um, her mom died when she was young. Um, okay, is that not a spoiler? <laughs> I am a wheeler dealer type character who knows uh, everything about everyone, who knows what's going off in the local areas. If you want something, he's the bloke that can get his hands on it for a price, Ooh. for a price. I think what we might call her nowadays is like an entrepreneur because what she's doing is creating value in all kinds of different ways by working very, very hard. She is essentially the opposite of war. So war is very win-lose, whereas trading and growing is very win-win and every transaction that you do results in more stuff. And she's she's the hub of the community because she is extremely privileged, right? Don't get me wrong. It's not like she's magicked all her wealth out of nowhere. And her husband's job, <laughs> possibly doing some of this war, is like uh, also where part of their income comes from. So uh, there's a little bit of um, maybe moral equivalency there as well. Um, however, like in terms of what she cares about and what she focuses on, yeah, it's very, I would say, very wealth creating, value creating. Kind of like a sort of a spy mastery type character, fingers in a lot of pies, knives in a lot of people. Oh, Mr. Ammons. He seems like a bit of a pivotal character to the story, really. He's, he's astride a fence of good and evil, uh, looking after a despotic king and uh, tolerating a despotic king, um, but at the same time is keeping an army in check. My, my character's um, Captain Eadwolf. He's um, he's come to a point where the, he feels like the person he's been fighting for, proudly fighting for, for a very long time, all of his life, has turned into a person that he doesn't want to risk his life for. He's seen is he's, he's seen other men we loved die for this king and he feels like they, they didn't get the, the credit uh, and he's reached a point and I can tell he's he's given a lot of thought. This has troubled him, this decision. I don't think he laughs and jokes much <laughs> at this point in his life. Um, ambitious, single-minded, driven, prejudice, you could say in a certain light. And yeah, just a, um, a particularly uh, self-driven creature. And she is a bit of a badass. For so long, I've been waiting for this kind of role to come up of like um, a woman that does stuff, you know? <laughs> so a lot of time it's just like women characters, oh no, my boyfriend left me, it's so sad. And it's like, oh, I don't really want to do that anymore. It's a bit boring. What is it about working in the fantasy genre that interests you or appeals to you as a person? You watch things like Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings or anything like that and you think, oh, that'd be so epic. Can you imagine like being in that fight and then being in fancy, you, you can, you can be that 
like badass person, you know, like Legolas or whatever. You can be that person. And like when you're a kid, you go around, you're just like fighting with swords and things like that. And you, and then as you get older, you kind of lose that imagination, that ability to kind of create some, a new world and not just live this everyday life. Uh, Bridget Jones, oh, she went to work. And I was like, oh yeah, I do that every day as well. But it's not every day I, you know, get an ax and chop someone's head off. Well, I mean, <laughs> um, uh, okay, bye guys. <laughs> Tolkien. And Tolkien, and more more Tolkien. I mean, he was, he, he just, he was my childhood. Lack of good and evil is just something that plays out in the world over and over, in spite of People can ignore it and say, well, it's relative. It's not, you know, I don't think good and evil is relative at all in terms of, you know, when some, someone's done something bad to you. You can go bonkers, but it's not got a set structure. Um, it's, the inspirations behind it are awesome. Uh, as everybody will see from fantasies come and gone and fantasies that are to be like this one, you can go anywhere with it. I just love that you can be totally creative and you can bring storylines and characters into it and that suppose it allows you to be a little bit more eccentric with your characters as well i think but characters like Tola is fantastic for me because i don't want as a female in a 40 to be typecast as always a certain role i like to throw myself out there a little bit and be a bit challenged by that see what what it brings Oh, I've always loved, I've always, always, always loved fantasy um, since I was a kid. You know, it's like, it's the perfect escapism. It's the ultimate for escapism. Yeah, I'm a big kid. Uh, I <laughs> I am such a kid at heart. Um, so I guess as I've grown up, my heart hasn't, and that inner child in me is still like, let's play. <laughs> uh, so yeah, filming this has been such a fun experience. But yeah, there's there's something very magical about being able to um, to play in a fantasy film because it is make believe, and you're being a, you can take away the the stresses of society and whatever's going off. And obviously, you know, everyone's been uh, affected by this pandemic. And yeah, when we were shooting this film didn't exist. It just did not exist. And that was wonderful just to be able to do that and escape and play. Yeah. Do you, do you have a specific process as an actor that you kind of tend to go towards or do you kind of depend on the role? I tend to draw less on like my own kind of experiences and really try to just throw myself completely into the character. Um, so for me, a lot of that comes with like, you know, really researching the character and like understanding their history. And I mean, that's one of the really great things about Marilyn is we just have this like rich history that you guys have created for us. So it's so easy to just jump in and just really be this other person. When the cameras go on, I want to feel like 500% that I am that character and not even remember my own self. You know, just, but I just, I remember Erin, I remember her history, I remember her relationship with her father and the farm and everything that's happened. But I will say one thing though, I think one thing about my process that I do have to kind of stick with is if I'm doing an accent, I have to just speak in that accent the whole time. There's so many different like directors who like to play on that kind of thing and obviously Kieran's massive on that and wants to get you into that character as much as possible and put you in that world. You've not got a full-fledged character unless you know where your character is, who, where they're from, and almost have almost a day-to-day -day kind of running of their life and who they yeah. are as a person. But when, whenever I first get a script, even if I'm applying for a role, I always think, where has this person been before? Like, what life have the what life have they led already? I mean, you see something in a story, and you, and you know, there's always this thing of, well, they only existed then. No, they didn't. They had a life previous to this. So, what was their life like before? You know, how old, you know, this the backstory is massive for me. And so the information that you guys gave me was invaluable. When I when I get a script, I will read through it and my mind's already running wild with, with imaginations. And so I will then make some notes at the side of it, just some like key character traits, similarities and differences. I will then start to then incorporate uh, research. So I'll research the era, which will then tie in perfectly with the information that you guys gave me. 
and then also looking at the language because um, the language that I speak is different to the majority of the cast. So that's what I'm trying to incorporate is then making sure that the accent and the way that I speak is as close to the role that's been written as possible. Kiamar's from the, the wolf tribe, so I will start to look at an animal such as the wolf and I'll get the traits from that and I'll incorporate that into the character. Like I've said to Kieran, I think he is part wolf, part, part mm. human because he is the wolf in every essence, like he's on his own in, in the story. We find him on his own in the woods. He'd rather be on his own in the wild because he feels a lot more comfortable there. To me, being an actor is a bit like being a detective. You're doing a lot of detective work. You figure out who this person is. The great thing about this is kind of like wondering where the character is going. Where's the character been? That's what I like doing as well. You know, what's my character's journey? Where does my character fit in the world? And then hopefully I turn up on set, meet the other actors, and then just kind of play with it. Have everything that I've done in the back of my head and just have some fun instinctively on set with the other actors, see what magic we can create on screen, really, which I'm really looking forward to. I just cannot wait to meet the rest of the cast and uh, just get playing, really. What is it you're most looking forward to about getting on set and getting cracking on with me, Well, What, just, just getting the chance to work again, you know, that's the thing. We, we, you know, we, everybody's struggling, we've been doing Zoom calls for for the past twelve months and, and trying to you know trying to get by, but um, but yeah, just just to get get by doing it again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to learning from the learning mainly from the other actors. I'm looking forward to the being in that world. Really looking forward to being in that world when other people's enthusiasm rubs off on me. I really like that. That's why. For, I'll give an example. I I find it hard to train without being in the gym, because if, if I'm training at 60% and someone's training at 100%, then I'll take my uh, game up. Probably getting into character and not looking like me. <laughs> I'm hoping to look nothing like me in some sense. I've tried to be quite creative in how, you know, maybe I could contribute and tell you like how I'd like the image to be or whatever. And that's what I think is wonderful about you is you are very open to hear ideas and see it as a kind of a collaboration even though you're leading on it and i think that's really important because people feel invested then i want to be in a costume now uh because that will be like yes i'm doing this now it's the real thing getting dressed up is the best part about it because you're stepping into a, literally somebody else's clothes and then your character really comes together there and creating a world with you guys you know what i mean that's what it's about we're playing you know what i mean we're having fun let's create a great story that people are gonna be entertained by and we can have fun making it i've met some of the cast obviously online so far we had a zoom read through and i cannot wait just get get with everyone get with you know my kind of people you know and uh, create some magic you know and have some fun the thing i'm most looking forward to seeing on screen without spoiling it is the set. It's just to see the set and the dressing and everything all together as one cohesive piece is so exciting. Really helped me immerse into the character and just really feel like I was Elise who owned this tavern, who was out here for the day serving rich noblemen. I think the map that you have created will mean some outdoor shooting, which I'm really excited about. Um, but just to see how, how the map opens up and how you, you, you deal with different scenarios and situations because what you've got prepared in the background is very exciting. I'll say it again. It is exciting. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'm really excited about the last scene, which I can't give away any spoilers. Um, yeah. So um, the way that it's written, I can just like see everything in my mind. And I just think, wow, like when we film that, that's going to be amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully see you face to face soon. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you very much. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so much fun just yeah. getting everything done. It's gonna be an absolute blast, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know, I know. Thank you for talking to me. I, I, I think I might say that line and that's my acting career done. I think that's, <laughs> that's oh. as mad and as dramatic as it's gonna get. No, thank you very much.
Oh, you, you don't have to play in my heartstrings, do you, Dad? <laughs> well done, guys. Love you. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And I will... It's all right, mate. Yeah, I'll catch you very soon. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see you both. Thank you so much, man, for this. This has been absolutely fantastic. No, you're welcome. And we will catch you very soon. See you later, guys. Thank you so much. See you in a bit, nice one, James. Catch you soon, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> I never didn't say anything weird. <laughs> no, you've you can put that in. <laughs> cool, thanks, Dale. Cheers, Christine. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, buddy. I'll let you get on with the rest of your day, whatever lockdown <laughs> has in store for you. Great to meet you, Dale. Cheers. I will. That's right. the interview done. So, thank you so much, matey, and we will right. see you soon. I hope it was any. I hope it was good, man. Oh, oh, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, no, fantastic. Thank you so much. Another human talking to me. Thank you so much. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> <See you later. laughs>